Thursday, August the 16th. With the great air raids of yesterday and last night only a few hours past, it is reported this morning that German bombers and fighting planes are again over southeast British coastal towns. Berlin says a renewal of the attacks awaits only clearing of mists over the channel. In Rome, the Italian high command says British planes raided North Italy again last night, but there are no details. But now the news direct, as reported by Columbia's correspondents in London and Berlin, following which there will be an analysis of the news by Linton Wells. First, the report of Larry Lesseur from the British capital. Go ahead, London. This is London. I am speaking from a crowded air raid shelter, two floors underground. This morning, large forces of German bombers are continuing their unprecedented attempt to bomb England. We do not know yet how many more planes the Royal Air Force have added to their record score of yesterday when the Air Ministry announced that the RAF had destroyed 144 out of a German armada of 1,000 planes with the loss of only 27 British fighters. During last night, the Midlands area of England was heavily bombed. One raid lasted three hours. Naturally, there were casualties, as yet undetermined. Two nurses were seriously hurt when a sanatorium in the Midlands was hit. But the 330 patients were taken safely to air raid shelters. Yesterday, the German Air Force launched 11 attacks along a 500-mile front. When the sirens sounded in London, I watched all traffic stop for a moment. Buses unloaded their passengers at air raid shelters. But before the all-clear signal sounded, the buses were running again, and people stood in little knots on street corners, watching the skies. Like almost every large city, London's airport was erected far out in the suburbs as a sort of afterthought. It takes a taxi about 20 minutes to get to Croydon from the center of London. Unlike airports in America, Croydon Field is a great expanse of lush green grass. It has no asphalt runway. I made the familiar trip to Croydon this morning, where in peacetime, big transport planes skimmed off the gently rolling turf to Paris, about an hour away. But this morning, the grass of Croydon was colored a dirty greenish white. Dust thrown up by German bombs dumped there last evening. A number of the buildings that surround the vast field were in ruins. An army of tin-helmeted air raid wardens were digging and searching. They had been working all night by the light of flares. Probably the first lights that have appeared at night in London since last September 1st. The number of air raid wardens was matched only by the number of little boys who had made the long trip out to the bombed airport on their bicycles. Like small boys the world over, these little English fellows were big, busy picking up bits of rubble as souvenirs. I was astonished by the number of people who walked around wearing a neat white bandage on their heads, like a skull cap. The reason was apparent. Croydon Airfield is surrounded by small, neat, suburban houses. The ones nearest the field had their shingled roofs holed by falling bricks. I learned that most of these injuries were slight, but they served to give London's air raid ambulance girls the opportunity to use some of the skill they had acquired in 11 months of assiduous practice. Most of this, this morning's onlookers were in almost holiday mood, eager and curious. But the persons who lived in the little houses near the bomb field were obviously shaken by their experience. They were just recovering from that stunned expression you can see on the faces of people who have been in an auto crash. The results of the German raid were obviously not important so far as military objectives are concerned. It was more in the nature of a spectacular feat, probably intended to demonstrate that the air defenses of London can be penetrated at will. If this were the German object, they obviously succeeded. But if they figured to break the morale of the London populace, they have just as obviously failed. For even those people wearing the skull caps, the white bandages, managed to grin very often. Yesterday, they were obscure suburbanites. Today, they are heroes in the eyes of their neighbors. This is Larry LeSueur returning you to CBS in New York.